Hello. Hello. Welcome to the uh, audio commentary on my little f short film, Perfect Stranger, that uh, Mr. Mr. Pond here appears in. I was in that, yeah. Yeah. Not much, not much. Just, just a little bit. Y y yeah. Only every scene. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't have to big it up, you know. I don't <laughs> so, <laughs> not to toot my own horn or anything, but I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was in there. And so, uh, yeah, this film, is, I, I wrote the script ages ago, only just got around to actually filming it. Because his course forced him to. <laughs> yes, for college. So um, we're sitting about two feet away from the screen. Yeah, we're, sat, yeah, we're just sat on the floor in, in front, front of a massive TV. Uh, <laughs> and because we're sharing a set of headphones, um, we're uncomfortably close to each other. Um, it wouldn't be the first time. Not at all. <laughs> we're, we're knee to knee, uh, yes. elbow to elbow. It, it's it's pr it's pretty intimate. <laughs> okay, so um, do we want to do you want to start? Well, firstly, okay. Oh. So Midget wrote and directed this film, okay, and he edited it. Yeah, and I like, sound mixed it. Yeah, he's done a lot of work on this, okay. I I I, I recorded a little bit of music for yeah. the film. It's um, yeah, it's, I, <laughs> it's, I've got mixed feelings about my score. <laughs> Now, I, from <laughs> what people have said, the score's the best part, so... Oh, I thank you, babe. I appreciate yeah. that. So, uh, let... Oh, yeah, I casually flirt with him. Don't worry about it. It's chill. Yeah. Okay. Right. So... Are oh, you ready? Yeah. I'm going to have to say play when it starts. <laughs> Delay clicky noise. Play. Love some buffering. Okay, so, um... Soft. I stole this from Pan's Labyrinth. That's um, which we just watched. It's quite a pretty decent film. It is a very good film. Oh, there it is. So. Oh God, look at my mouse. Damn. I just. Uh, if you're interested in animals, just watch the dogs in the background here. Yeah. And how they're not in my shop, but they are in his. Coffee. Not bad. <laughs> Isabel is is my co-star, as it were. Uh -huh. She's not here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that that line doesn't match up. You were there, weren't you? You don't match up. There's dog again. <laughs> it's all about the dog. The dog has symbolism. What does it mean? Um, it means, oh, it's secretly because she's a bitch. Ah, yeah. see, so you just thought of that. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> oh yeah, if the sound sounds off, it's because they have to redub it all. Because you oh, could hear the Your boy wind. needed to shave. Oh, yeah, I did actually uh, grow my um, facial hair, uh, or what little facial hair I do have. I can't grow a beard. <laughs> it's just on that unsexy bum fluff shit. But See, that, that shot just there with the sort of the street lights illuminating it. Hey, a bit like the one from The Exorcist. This is about the one bit that I'm actually proud of. <laughs> so I love this bit of me. It's a yeah. idea. But um, I just feel like on this recording, I really yeah. fucked it. Like there's one bit that linger and it, the bigger it doesn't match up properly. Yeah. No. I your mum did a really good job. Yes, for that, first is my time. that is my actual. That is my actual mother. We thought we would add a bit of the realism. Yeah. Um, so there is the accurate genetic connections. If you look really carefully in the right hand side, you can see me. This, there he is. This scene is actually really zoomed in for my original shot, just to crop me out. <laughs> see, this you cut out quite a lot of little little bits that. Um, that I, I would have liked to have kept in. Well, gee, but I'm sorry, Midget. <laughs> I was a bad director, and I didn't, I didn't let people prepare enough. <laughs> also, when you say "mum," though, it does sound a bit angry. It doesn't quite match up. I was a little bit angry. You said the rest of it was done more happy, and then that one was angry. I like that no, shot. I had a little bit of anger in that. Yeah, it's a good shot. That's my favourite shot. No, I was a little bit pissed, Midget. Okay. Yeah. I just want to let it out, yeah? And I thought, you know, that's the time to shine. Mum. But was the bit that Ollie sped up? Because you see there's a car just zooms by. Because you walked way too slowly. I'm supposed to be a cripple. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise this scene lingers way too long. You could have just, like, cut it a bit early. No, because I need to get... You need to get to the point. It didn't need to match up exactly. I'm sure they could yeah, figure out that I've moved a little bit. <laughs> no, because that's got a jump cut and you don't do that. You're a jump cut. That's a nice transition. Family has yeah. no idea who you are. I've only just noticed as he has three Come earrings. On. I'm not very observant. <laughs> also, you may notice here that the score has sped up slightly. The chord changes are a bit quicker. 
to represent the faster pace that's picking up. I, th I don't, oh, know, I don't yeah. know if I've picked oh, up on that. No, that's, I think you could just see your bag lying in shot there. Well, I'd not noticed that before. Lens flare, JJ Abrams, eat your heart out. JJ Abrams. This, um, these had a little bit of difficulty getting these shots because it was cold and wet and no one could keep a straight face. And you can see the outtakes for all the... <laughs> that bit I should have started a bit earlier because you can see you standing still. Are you spoken to anyone else? Oopsie. Yeah, that one you can tell we recorded the I tried separately. <laughs> you say, I tried <laughs> calling Matt. <laughs> I like the way the forest just sort of slopes down into the nothing. Mm, the imagery. Just go for so it. I wasn't sure when we were doing our location shoots it at work, but actually I love it's really good. Yeah. <sighs> That's a nice out of focus close up there. It's the best kind of close up. Except maybe a Jacob shot. Oh yeah. I hate these bits where I accidentally zoomed in rather than focused. Because the dials are right next to each other. <laughs> Well, credits. Yeah. <laughs> this bit cuts way too frantically. Oh, I, hate, I hate these bits for me. That didn't need to cut. That didn't need to cut. That could have been done in one long take. Ollie wouldn't let me say the fuck word. <laughs> no, because this is not necessary. <laughs> You're not necessary. <laughs> and so she must. See, that's not. My mum's got dementia. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> See, this bit's really obviously redubbed because I didn't make the ambient track loud enough. You're an ambient track. And so she must. Trying to go. See the the white specks on the ground here, a representation of their white privilege. Fuck off. <laughs> and it's a problem that I didn't shoot this film with black actors. Or are you ready for your EastEnders moment? You. You cannot this is the big East Enders cliffhanger really. coming up. Look, I just know what was going on, okay? <laughs> That's you really out of sync. Dun 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 dun. I added this track in. This wasn't technically meant to be here. Oh, oh that's not nice in close. No. Oh, epilepsy warning much. Sorry, guys. But yeah. Oh, this bit. The big twist. This is my favourite bit of editing in the whole film. In a second. That cut there. That's the only bit I think matches up. I like that as well. She's like, oh, I'm evil. I added that in because I didn't have the shot of you leaning yourself up against the tree. Um, so I had to put that the shot on. The problem with that scene is the, the music carries on too much. It's too loud. And I think I felt I didn't like this bit. It was too erratic on my part. I, want, I wish I, I wanted a bit more time to kind of just fix this scene up a little bit for my part. Um, no, I, I think it works. Some bits it work. Is just... Like, the bit where it goes a bit sinister kind of works, but there's some bits are too, kind of, there's too much going on. Yeah. Also, the bit, there's a bit coming up in the second that I had to flip because I broke the 180 degree rule. And you can notice because the writing's backwards on your coat. This bit I'm quite proud of. And your hair flips side. So yeah, backwards writing, flipped hair. It annoys me. <laughs> See, and it's okay. We said you're not a looker because I wrote it and um, I deliberately cast you because if I cast someone else, it just seemed rude. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> See, there's not pretty much to say about this film. I just really don't like it. <laughs> it's good. It's just... Oh, continuity error. Your uh, walking stick can be seen behind the character of Eva here. I did the fact he was at the top. I did say about that, and you were like, "No, it's fine." Well, it's barely noticeable. You're barely noticeable. That was out of sync. But as I said to Midget, though, obviously, I'm more of this is a bit as well. But yeah, this bit we didn't have. We didn't have very long, obviously, to kind of finish it all off. Like he had very kind of limited time to make this film. We didn't have time for reshoots, mm. re-edits, you know. So considering only about like a few weeks, you know, to do all this. Yeah. And he did oh, a damn yeah. fine job with it. Ah, thank you. And now I've got my dad's cameo coming up in a second. And now, with the last shot of the film. This was the last thing I filmed. Was the morning the before I needed to finish this. Morning, still that's my name, right? Well, the well done. And that's, that's your mum's name. That's my family's name. Uh -huh. Other crew. Oh, oh, oh that's me. Original <laughs> music, Mr. Pond. Editor, Oliver Bachelot. Cut off on the TV. Tonight. Oopsie. 
My dad really hates his line in that. Probably Why? doesn't sound like a news reporter. Well, you know oh, what? We're about to get some Indian film if you don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay you're so, the best um, Indian film, The Battle Woman. <laughs> oh, yes. I was just going to suggest that after this, I think we should immediately follow it with a commentary <laughs> of Ray Dog's seminal... <laughs> Get away Master from me, witch slap. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as good as Neil Breen. Almost. Almost. Ne and uh, for those of you who don't know who that is, just type in Neil Breen on YouTube, you will not regret. Uh, like, how do you spell that? Uh, Neil, like N-E-I-L, Breen yeah. is in B-R-E-E-M. -E there's, there's a particular scene, I can't believe you killed yourself. It's just amazing. <laughs> he's... It's just, it, when it comes to bad, like, films that are so bad, it's good. Like, he's cut up, he's a cut he... above Tommy Wiseau. Like, he's... No, he's the American Tommy Wiseau. Oh. No, um, Tommy Wiseau is a real American guy. He's he's an American hero, you know? He's from Louisiana. Ha ha ha. Oh, story. <laughs> <laughs> that is what this commentary will dissolve into now, is um, yeah, just... references to <laughs> things that no one else has seen except. <laughs> <laughs> Jam anyone? <laughs> oh. That's, um, there's actually. What happens after the after the film? The character of Eva, she was meant to reveal herself to be an alien, um, well, sort of reptilian alien, a Mister Lizard. Ah <laughs> 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 oh dear, but, uh, and that our idea, I believe, or I, I, I believe, Midget's inspiration came from two things. It was uh, one of them was uh, the episode of Shut Up and Dance by, from Black Mirror. That's the mu the I wrote it to the music of. Shut up and dance. So that's where the sort of the tone finale, came yeah. from. I get the tone and the idea, then the big twist. Yeah. But the actual kind of the idea, the whole thing of someone like who like who writes themselves into people's lives is from uh, an episode of Torchwood. Uh, yeah, Adam. Adam. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was the and then um, that that also comes in when she's sort of when Eva is with you. So um, don't you remember anything? That's what he does in that episode. He sort of holds the person. He's like, oh, remember this. And then suddenly he's implanted himself. So yeah, that's where that sort of came from. And then the um, ending in the woodland, I stole that from Under the Skin, which is a weird Scottish film. And that ends with a sort of shot of an alien in a forest in really bad weather conditions. Mm. So I sort of took that. Who's the main woman in that? Scarlett Johansson. For some reason, I want to say she Jennifer Lawrence. She gets naked quite a lot in that film. Um, I think it makes sense. The plot doesn't. It? Yeah, it's not just for the sake. And then, I sort of took the idea of the sort of female character who knows more than she sort of lets on. I took that passion from sort of Ex Machina with that because the um, I also stole the name in Ex Machina. The robot is called Ava, and in the film, our woman is called Eva. But, um, and there's also some biblical reference to Adam and Eve. Yeah, because it's, what go on, what, what's the biblical undertones here? But, but Eva, technically, in my head, there's some weird idea that so maybe because she's the alien, maybe she's sort of been on Earth for quite a lot longer than everyone else, so she might be the first woman. And then Adam is just a really common name. I flicked through a baby names book. It was an accidental reference. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, you're supposed to make some clever shit about Catholicism here. Catholicism. Me. Yeah, because she molests his mind like a priest molests a child. <laughs> <laughs> we just put in the spotlight here on some topical issues. <laughs> spotlight. Speaking of spotlight. That's a great <laughs> film. Good pun there. That yes, is that really is a, I do film. want to see that film actually. I've got the DVD. Mm. Mm. It is it is very good. I think very it's on Netflix. Good. Everything's on Netflix. Except Submarine. Submarine should be on Netflix. That's where I took the idea for the shot. Um, Oliver has an unhealthy obsession with Richard Iwadi. No, just his films. Just his films. And him. You even copy his hair. <laughs> no, I don't! <laughs> you do, you never cut it's it. It's not intentional. You let it yeah, sure. It is not intentional. I guess the everyday anyway. combing it to get that part in just like he does in IT guy. <laughs> I wouldn't you be just it's, like Richard? It's not curly. Though. You know what? On this video, you can put a picture of it on, and they will see. 
I can't be bothered to do that much editing. I'll take the picture. I'll fucking edit this myself if I need be. You, know? <laughs> you don't have the program to edit a picture. You don't have the program. I do. <laughs> it's called fucking movie making. Oh, I guess you can do it in there, yeah. That's I did the podcast on the other channel. No, no, I was thinking of doing something else. I don't even need this in anymore. You don't even need that in anymore, no, really. No. But, yeah, the shot of the eyes at the beginning. At, in Near the beginning of Submarine, the character of Oliver... Um, yeah. Which is not why I like the film. <laughs> um, the character just sort of briefly glances at the camera, um, and that me and through that we know that that's going to be how we sort of view the story. So it's from his perspective. So the opening shot of this film, being on Adam's eyes, sort of shows that we're going to see the story from his point of view, and then we do as it goes along. We don't know anything that he doesn't. So we sort of find out the story along with him. So, because if we, if we'd had a bit where we saw that Eva was a alien and that she was going to implant herself into his memory, so she could sort of survive and carry on, but he didn't know that it wouldn't have the same effect. So mm. I feel that it was important that we saw it from him, and that we didn't know anything he didn't. Well, isn't that clever? See? It's so in-depth and thoughtful. <laughs> That's a tumbleweed films reference. Self-referencing. Narcissism right here. Self-referencing. That's so in-depth and thoughtful. Doesn't that video get taken down? Oh, yeah, because after about two years, they finally took down. But it, it's still... Anywho. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like... So yeah, I think this film, like, I think there's a lot of clever, there's a lot of thought going behind it. I think, I think the big problem is just the fact, obviously, because we had a sort of short amount of time, such a short deck, because he had a deadline to hand it because it's part of an exam here for yeah. his college course. So, you know, he only had about, what, a month to kind of, like, shoot and finish it all off. Yeah, because I'd written it in the summer, mm. but I had to sort of cut it all down so it could fit into yeah. sort of five, ten minutes. Um, he, had to, he had to majorly cut down from his full idea. Because the original script <coughs> was about 15 pages long or so. So that would have been um, a sort of 15 minute film. Mm. Um, and because it needs explanation. Because we don't, we don't know why Adam is the way he is. What's actually happened. All we sort of get is the hint that he's been in a car accident or something from the um, mm. but yeah there, it needs there needs to be something more I thought, I thought we, we should do like an extended cut of it at some point or like just do a reshoot re reboot of it you know it's like I would like to try mm. and rewrite it and sort of get show its full potential because I feel yeah it's, it's just potential but like it's just, no, just a few tweaks yeah I, think I was saying to you the other day that it's just not necessarily the kind of story I'd like to write anymore because mm. when I wrote it I enjoy different things to what I do. I still enjoy the things that I liked when I wrote it, but now I have an unhealthy obsession with Submarine. <laughs> and um, I like the sort of Wes Anderson films and that sort of quirky, sort of weird, whimsical film. No, I just like a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. But horror and comedy, you know, are up there for me. They're my things. But yeah, um,. I think it was another thing that made the shooting of this one quite difficult because I'm at uni, so um, mm, it, often it was literally one day a week that I'd be free, and like it was just saucy, you know, obviously it was the a month. Only day everyone was a available. month. It meant that we, we'd only really have four days for me, and that would be to do shooting and for music recording. So really, <laughs> so really, and of course, getting Izzy available at the same time as yeah. well. It's just such a tight shooting schedule because of course you know they guys both obviously i've had my course work to do they've both got course work to do because she was also involved in like i think two other film projects yeah with other so, people yeah. plus of course i think she, she knew musical theater and stuff as well so. oh yeah yeah she also so, she, she, she she's at her timetable is all over the place mm, so I see. <laughs> yeah but no, I, what we need what we just it just needs more time <laughs> and it was just i feel on my behalf because it was wet and horrible and people were starting to suffer. I didn't get the amount of takes I'd liked or sort of directed the performances I would have liked because I didn't want to force people to be out there longer. Obviously, I wouldn't have cared because of me. Really me, I've me I'm, 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 obviously, 
Oh, as you see, I, I, I thought it's the role I can like. I actually kind of grew my hair out for about a couple of months just to make myself. Kind of, and I didn't God, shave. Method acts. I didn't shave for a few weeks. I just kind of like try and make myself look really kind of dishevelled. Mm. Just I, and I, I was like, I, I, I did slightly sleep deprive myself just because that's all the dark yeah. rings around my eyes. So I see. I was trying to. I was kind of trying to throw myself kind of into the role a little bit, mm. you know, like and um. But obviously, I think when you actually when we were actually up there on the on the downs, um, mm. like it was actually it was actually shot on Valentine's Day. Yes. Um, but. <laughs> So that's, was... how, that's how we spent, that's how me and Izzy spent our Valentine's Day, it was, um... <laughs> it, yeah, all, all three of us, yeah, but it was just like, yeah, it's pretty much <laughs> for the shot. I hugged, hugged the same girl about 20 times and then got pushed down a hill. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, and we're not actually together, I'll make that clear, so... <laughs> just so we, this is the first time we've met, so it was a very strange way to spend the day for all three of us involved, I, really. <laughs> but, uh, I think, um... But, um, and also for, the, for the weather conditions, like, it was nasty up there, like, yeah. um... It was cold and wet and, like, obviously all the shivering and all that, that wasn't acting, like, it was genuinely <laughs> that freezing and cold, you know, the, like... Our hands were going numb. Yeah, the image in the thumbnail, you are genuinely... I'm just... I, I'm just cold. Wet and depressed. I'm not depressed, I was having a good time. <laughs> it's a bit cold. Yeah. And I, I'd throw myself down a hill about five or six times at that point. There are One of which times of... was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, the camera wasn't on you and you decided... Oh, I'm just gonna keep going. I just thought gonna he was gonna going. pan the camera around, okay? And then he didn't. <laughs> nah, and then there's... Um... What I wish I had got with that scene is a handheld shot that actually followed you down. You didn't bring your fucking stabiliser though. Even though I told no, you the it, day before, bring no, your stabiliser. that's the thing, it would have worked handheld without the stabiliser because it's shaky. You're meant to be. You are falling down. That's not steady in real life. So it would have... Um, so what? Oh yeah, we didn't even mention that was a complete change of location from where we planned to do it before. Well, no... As we got to the location, we couldn't find the location. We couldn't find where we'd previously found, <laughs> so we um yeah, funny lad. We had to change the idea immediately, and I think it works. Oh, I think it's good. It's, it's gonna, the same sort of thing. It's remote. Yeah, a little bit pan's labyrinthy. <laughs> it's, it's n uh, that wasn't pan's labyrinth. I completely stole that from Under the Skin. If you watch Under the Skin, they I might someday. I've heard it's quite good. Quite um... it's really it's odd. Uh, apparently I should stop saying odd because I say it way too often you but do. um <laughs> nah, but oh no I say it's fine um oh no I say indeed so much literally so I got my um I, I was chatting with my friend because we're in the same uh, seminars at uni for psychology which is my course of choice oh. um but we, we were looking we were looking at each other's like essays because we're because we're cool <laughs> uh, we was like proofreading for each other because you know it's just a good thing to do when you're students you know proofread each other's essays you'll spot things that you, you yourself won't spot mm. But we noticed that I used the word indeed so fucking much. <laughs> Literally every other fucking word, it was indeed. It was so bad. No, but, um, yeah, uh, what was I even saying? Um, um, you were saying about under the skin and the imagery and how it's weird. Oh, though. yeah, no, it is. It's, it's strange. Because it, it's so, a lot of it is done just steady. The camera is stuck in this van. As Scarlett Johansson drives around Scotland, picking up random strangers who were complete random strangers who didn't know they were in a film, and just thought some woman that looked a bit like Scarlett Johansson was chatting them up, and then they go to this weird black void where they all get naked and then drown. Was well, the people in the film didn't know they were in a film? Not at first. She just picked up random people in her car. And then, once they'd done that, they said, Okay, we're making a film, how far would you go um, to do this? And the one said, Oh, I'll do anything. End up having to get naked in the black void. Um, it's a weird, it is a weird film. <laughs> there is no other word to describe Strange. it. It, there are bits of it that are genuinely unsettling. And... What, for example? Oh, I don't, I don't know without... Now, they, it's just weird surreal imagery that sort of does it won't make sense out of context oh, okay. it can't be described it's just mm. it's really oh, yeah, but I, see, I think I'll see I'm a big fan of horror and like, thrillers and stuff like that but I'm, mm. I'm like a big fan of surreal kind of imagery films like that yeah. I think, for example that's Antichrist that's just one I've been telling you about recently mm. that's uh that's a really good film that's um well I say good it's 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 wrong on so many <laughs> levels like it's 
it's not it, it leaves you washed out afterwards it's not a sort of film you feel good after watching but yeah. like it's one of the films that everyone should watch is like it's, it's very kind of the undertones and the themes it explores cause it's, it's got well, everyone th- over a certain age should watch it yes <laughs> <laughs> no yeah don't, it's not it's not one to hang up to put on for the kids you know it's, it's uh what was the first film you not, saw it's not as nice as girl of the dragon tattoo which apparently your grandparents <laughs> think is perfectly acceptable to show on a 10 year old <laughs> You make them out to be terrible people. Well, so it's like the first thing you ever told me about your grandparents. <laughs> it's like, they want to show my, do- my sister, who was ten, <laughs> the girl to drink a tattoo, which involves violence, <laughs> anal rape. And I was like, well, that's nice. <laughs> They're great people. You know what, a bit of buggery with the ten-year-olds, why not? <laughs> it's Scotland, they don't care. <laughs> this happens all the time in the high street, really. <laughs> Come to Edinburgh. Oh look. Surprised. oh look, there's a man getting buggered by the bins outside Asda. <laughs> <laughs> that probably happened. But yeah, but honestly, right, so that one you can get away with. But Antichrist, really not for the kids. <laughs> yeah. But basically, yeah, what it is it's got it's got Willem Dafoe in it, and um you see you see some Green Goblin dick. Um <laughs> Nice. Because it, it does contain real sex. This last one show the director's famous for using real sex in his films. He's famous for being not okay. I know, I, I don't That's <laughs> not how you direct I don't know a ridiculous amount about the last one show. I know he's a bit fucked, like <laughs> yeah. but Obviously, from deep disturbed minds is where you get interesting films, you know, and interesting explorations. I think like, that's why this didn't work. It's because I'm not disturbed enough. I think I, he, there needs to be a level of. Not really. I think Black Mirror was written by not disturbed people, as far as I'm aware. Charlie Brooker. I don't know. He's a weird guy. He's not necessarily disturbed. Oh, not every dark movie is written by someone who's fucked up. All I'm gonna there's, say. there's probably something not right. You have to be at a certain point. To actually well, not... find a story like that, I've had interesting dark ideas before. It doesn't mean I'm a dark, I'm a terrible or dark person. <laughs> it's just <laughs> anyway. But it's, it's probably a yeah, tree. He wrote the Depression trilogy of movies, um, which is Antichrist, Melancholia, and Nymphomaniac parts one and th- or volume one and two. I haven't actually seen the other two. But I've seen Antichrist. I saw when Shia LaBeouf gets naked. Which one? Nymphomaniac. There's also a coat hanger abortion. Lots of fucked up shit happens in those <laughs> movies. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho, it's part of the depression trilogy, and um, when he directed Antichrist, he was actually in a very severe bout of depression at the time, like to the point where he couldn't actually film at times. Mm. Like it was so bad, and like there's a lot of surreal artistic imagery in places, right. and um, it's a very kind of clever inspira- uh, not, not inspiration, not exploration, I beg your pardon, into mm. <laughs> depression. And um, obviously, I do psychology, but I'm particularly interested in clinical psychology and mental health. So for me depression having uh mm. close friends and all that ha- have been severely affected by it obviously not naming names but it's um for me i find the topic very interesting and mm. you know like anything and, and having think... friends that become sort of depressed alcoholics like jacob um <laughs> we won't we wish we weren't gonna mention this <laughs> no, um joking jacob is absolutely fine he's just a christian leave him alone <laughs> no, but, um... <laughs> but anywho yeah and, um, <laughs> so yeah, but um, basically the general plot of the movie is that, um, it's a couple, they're, ha- they're having sex in the shower, and because of it, um... Oh, that's how all good films start. That's how all good films start, really, and there's a, there's a lot of Green Goblin dick, and we can't just say, Willem Dafoe has a massive dick. It's scary. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm scared, okay? I, I live in awe of his penis. <laughs> Do you want that on a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I live in awe of Willem Dafoe's penis. Nathan Pond, 2018. <laughs> Well, it really is a sight to behold. <laughs> I, okay. I feel like that, that should be in the consumer advice that like 18 <laughs> contains fucking monster dick. <laughs> He's a big boy, okay? I don't, I don't like to dwell, but, <laughs> you know. You, you, it's like Rasputin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's cherry nice. Ooh. <laughs> Anywho, that's an obscure reference, and we're not even going to go into that reference. That, that's it. That's a two AM sesh that we should never speak of again. Um, that documentary seriously disturbed me, and I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a bit as fucked up. Anywho, let, moving on swiftly. <laughs> <We're>, um, <laughs> so yeah, and, um, so while they're having sex in the shower, big old dick, <laughs> big, big old dick, and. Um, the kid, who's not involved with the dick, I hasten to add, 
Um, they have a kid. Um, I mean, I mean, from what I can see, Winnie must be pretty damn fertile. Because <laughs> what? <laughs> so they got a little kitty. Um, he's about like I don't remember how old. He's he's a little kid. Okay, hmm. he's a bit young, somewhere between two and seven. <laughs> that, that's a gap. <laughs> it's quite a gap, isn't it? But you know. <laughs> Not as big as a gap is going to be on Willem Dafoe's female <laughs> co-star though, because fucking hell, seriously. I mean, just Google it, Google it. <laughs> Willem, Willem, Dafoe's <laughs> Willem Dafoe's big old donkey dick. Apparently, <laughs> which donkeys should be a, actually have. Which should be a card against humanity card. Yes. And what's that about donkey dick? Apparently, donkeys don't actually have that big. Horses do, but donkeys don't. I suppose donkeys are no, just small because there, there's some. Um, Bible quote. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it always starts well with a Bible no, quote, doesn't and it? And I don't. I. This is good. As, I'm paraphrasing, but it's something um, along the lines of, um, and I hope your husband. Um, pause. Sorry. Hello. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's something along the lines of, um, may your husband have a member the size of a donkey with discharge as much as a horse. Because basically, apparently horses have right. massive members, but they don't have much of a discharge. But donkeys have tiny members. So basically, but don't but have a massive amount of. Um, and discharge. so what they're going for is a lot of discharge here. Yeah, so it's basically it's, saying it's all about discharge, your, not about that. Your partner has a tiny, tiny tin tin, but um. Yeah. Oh, that's, usually, that's another interesting thing about like historical things, like in statues, like um. I used to get dragged around a lot of natural trust places as a kid, and um, oh yeah, they all have tiny. Yeah, back then recently, yeah, but like, that's why yeah, a lot of ancient statues and all that they have small dicks, and the reason being is because it was considered a, uh, having a small penis was considered a sign of uh, was it uh, knowledge, intelligence, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. was it fertility as well? Was it just I think something like that. Maybe. Yeah, because I think big big dicks were known as a sign of uh, <laughs> of stupidity, and uh, I remember recently about uh, William Defoe must be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> William Defoe. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Willem Dafoe, he's like <laughs> dunce. <laughs> he's good in Platoon. He doesn't get anything out. His in that. face just scares me. He's got a scary t- mouth. I don't know. There's something about. Yeah. He just terrifies me. Like, everything. <laughs> he's got a big old scary dick. <laughs> big old scary. Like. <laughs> That's the title of like, this video. <laughs> Willem Dafoe's big old scary dick. <laughs> like you know. If I if I if I if I walked into my room and he was there naked. <laughs> 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 Well, first I'd be like, why are you in my room naked? <laughs> Mr. Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Mr. Willem Dafoe. Also, nice to meet you. Uh, Award-winning actor, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. Uh, but as great as it is to meet you, you know, could you t- could you put some clothes on? <laughs> you know, and I'd, and I'd, um, I'd, offer, him, I'd offer him some tea, because I'm of British. Course, yeah. And then I'd be like, so, what brings you into my room naked? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be like, you know... How's the old IQ doing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, uh, I, I'd imagine like because he's probably there's probably a bit of a communication barrier because I don't speak retard. He'd probably <laughs> just be a little bit <laughs> dopey. <laughs> so I thought there'd be a bit of a communication issue at first, but eventually, you know, if we like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we could communicate through some taps or something. I don't know. I feel we get. Dum dum, dum dum. Yeah. And, um... So yeah, and then I, I then I just you know politely ask him to leave because <laughs> I'd be a little bit scared. <laughs> Go get a photo. But besides the point, <laughs> um, so I was in a national trust place, right? And we were looking. I was just telling my uh, I was having my cousins. I was telling my cousin who um, he's my first cousin. And he has he has kids who are my second cousins because that's how families work. And um, that's a lesson. That's a lesson for you guys. Um, <laughs> Unless you're in Texas, in which case it's all a bit, <laughs> all a bit confused, <laughs> isn't it? Really, yeah. Your sister's brother's cousin, who's also your dad. And just, your dog. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a bit complex. And your horse. Yeah, um, and I feel Deliverance really explored this in an interesting mm-hmm. light, you know. But uh, we, we, we're getting sidetracked again. <laughs> the moral of the story is, okay, I was in a national trust place. William Defoe wasn't there naked. <laughs> <laughs> he was just there as the comparison. Yeah. Next to Michelangelo's David. And he yeah. Was like, he's just uh, well, <laughs> not got a not got a big old willy. And um, and yeah, we were just looking at the statue. I think it was a David actually. Mm. And um, yeah, we were saying I was just saying about how he's on the big dick, and he's like, and I was, and, and um, I think there's another thing I was saying that um, like a sign of a small piece is also a sign of being a good, better father. 
No oh, And then my, my cousin was like, not missing a tick, you know, it was like, oh, I guess I wasn't a better father then. <laughs> I was like, oh, smooth, you've got, you've got that bounce for a 30 year old, you know. <laughs> this is the same time after just where I got hit on. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is a weird thing, right? Because uh, I don't really get hit on especially often, but it just happened at the National Trust place, which is a fucking weird experience. <laughs> but, uh, That's our next short story. <laughs> oh, yeah. The day I went camping with, Cam Cam with Katie Hopkins, part two. Katie's on Ket, so we went we had a little wander around the National <laughs> Trust place, and I got hit on. It's a bit of a long title. I think it might need to get something a bit more catchy. Maybe just like... Katie Hopkins part two, Willem Dafoe's not here <laughs> with his big old donkey dick. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he's a great actor, he's a great actor, really. I mean, like, has, it's not the worst he could be doing with his dick, as Kevin Spacey has recently illustrated. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, Kevin, whoops, I'm gay now, Spacey. <laughs> I mean, I think the thing is though, Kevin Space, right? I think people are giving him a bit of a hard rep. Now, hear me out, hear me out, okay? The thing is, he restarred around about the same time in the film American Beauty. Which is really good. I, it I, is a brilliant I do want to see that actually, despite the problem problematic fact that he is in it. But anyway, and, um, of course, in that he famously plays a paedophile. Now, the thing is, guys, it was method acting, okay? That's all it is. All it was, it was method acting. If Daniel Day Lewis did it, you go, what's wrong with that? But no. But no, just because he's gay, you homophobes. God. <laughs> really? <laughs> just Actually, like I'm changing the title of this video to Kevin Spacey is just misunderstood. You homophobes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. He's a brave man, just like Caitlyn Jenner's a brave, brave woman. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, Kevin Spacey isn't a good person. <laughs> just to make that very clear. <laughs> but, um, well... <laughs> <laughs> he's a he is a good actor and it's a shame because american beauty is really good he's really good in seven and some other thing i saw him in recently ants he's either in ants or a bug life ants. i can't remember which one it is <laughs> I love the way they're, they're of all the big insane. words because you're just like, he was really good in the bug's life. <laughs> he was quite. Oh, wait, I've got to explain. Life. Basically, Midget was deprived as a child of Disney films. Uh, I and... saw the Pixar ones. <laughs> mm. so the Incredibles. He's the greatest okay, film ever made. This man. This man is just, what 17 years old now. I don't know. Yeah. He's just had his 17th birthday, and a few days before was the first time he ever saw The Lion King. <laughs> I in mean. What the fuck is I wrong with him? I never thought it was. No one had ever said to me, but but in that sixteen <laughs> years, <laughs> no one has said to me. You know what? You should really watch the Lion That's King. bullshit? Because I've repeatedly said that to you. Well, I've clearly not listened. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> never listens to me. Uh, it's good. It's a good film. <coughs> Oh, do you remember how long it took me, took me to convince you to watch Walking Dead? And you're like, no, it's going to be rubbish. And you watch it and you're like, it's amazing. I'm terribly sorry. It's, it is quite good. It's a shame it's gone a bit... It has gone is. downhill. But, you know, I poor writing decisions. I'm not, I haven't either. I'm, I, I've given up on it a little bit. I'm yeah. sad to say. And also, I, I don't, know they killed Carl. I don't agree with the reasons they did it. Because actually my flatmate's a big fan. And she was telling me about all the, re oh. like, the reasons they killed him off. And it's pretty fucked. Like, because they're losing viewers. No, no, no. no basically, no, basically, what it is. Obviously, because um, in the comics, Carl was supposed... Oh, sorry. should have said spoilers. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a, a few people are going to be a bit angry with us. No one will watch this. Ah, uh, a loose key's going to be right mad. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Johnny Nice. You don't agree with fucking animals, and you give me spoilers for Walking Dead season eight. <laughs> Cunts. <laughs> but anywho, and um, yeah, and um. Basically, um, in the comics, and uh, obviously that the Walking Dead does it, the show does at least loosely follow the comic mm. events, even if it's not exact. Carl is supposed to be kind of like the future of it, you know, take over after Rick and all that, and yeah. like he's supposed to be the future of the story. Like he's meant to going to slowly shift to be the main character. But basically, the reason he's kicked him off is that now Chad the Rick, the actor who plays Carl, yeah. has turned eighteen. Obviously, he has to pay. They have to pay him full wages. <laughs> and AMC are fucking greedy, so basically they just said, right, fire him, so we don't have to pay him for. And like it's really annoying because like I think. I think he was actually talking. I think the idea was he was supposed to be going to have education, but he said, like, you know, I, w I won't do it if you can guarantee me the role. And they said, mm. oh, they guaranteed him the role. 
and he, he was even about to sign the contract, and then at the last minute, when he'd, like, bought a new house and stuff, and, like, all his parents had moved yeah. in somewhere, and, like, he took my new life out, and, like, to live near the set, mm. and kind of turned his back on his education, and all that, they said, oh, actually, by the way, we're killing you, lol. <laughs> I was got to point where, actually, where, um, um, uh, Lauren Cohan, who plays Maggie, is now, like, um, I think they're putting, they've, uh, put on a really bad financial position, because they're trying, mm. like, I think she's kicked up a fuss about it, and think this looks like they might be giving her the sack. And, um, even, um, Andrew Lincoln, you'll see, Rick. As like can't said, kill like off that, no, can they? they could. Yeah. Well, no, um, that's they, the they, AMC. Well, they killed they... off. They killed off Ned Stark in Game of Thrones. You know, you, you can kill off main characters. Yeah, but that was in the go. first series. Still though, but that I think obviously one... you can kill off like you know. Look at Doug. Look at uh, Douglas Central's character of Nick Custer in Primeval, which I'm still bitter about killing off the main character. Ten years on, it can still it can still continue, even though yeah. it won't be the same. And of course, Primeval went down the toilet after that. But also, Tracy Beaker, they brought back as Tracy Beaker returns. <laughs> And then they got rid of her, and then they carried on the program, but they just called it the dumping ground. Yeah, that was a bit of a stretch. I've heard it's on like season four now, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I didn't even know it was still going. Oh yeah, I, my, uh, I, I visited my little cousins recently, and uh, they had a oh, live player right. on, and it said, oh, dumping ground, the episode, and I'm like, really? <laughs> Trace Beaker was quality. It was, that was like my truck. <laughs> but you will not me that. <laughs> Where's my middle fight CD? It's gone this son. <laughs> 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 uh, it's really because he's in submarine, submarine. and which, all I can which think brings this podcast full circle <laughs> all I can think of watching that film is just every now and then he's going to turn around and go where's my little fave CD it's gone missing it's very it's psychotic that wasn't it <laughs> where's my little fave CD it's gone missing <laughs> no but submarine's there's also... only one real, real lad. lad no submarine's also got the um, girl that played Maria in the Sarah Jane Adventures Maria. <laughs> That's a song from West Side Story, which I've never seen the end of because it's four hours long. It's I'm... also a Green Day song because I'm a Green Day nerd. Was West Side Story four hours long? It's way Fuck too me. long. Fuck me. But it's written by the Sweeney Todd guy. Yeah, Stephen Sondheim. Who which did. I had no idea because they're <laughs> very different things. Well, he, he's very dos- he, for, it's not dos- very versatile. He's like Into the Woods, yeah. which the actual, the Disney movie I know isn't very good, I've heard. Right. But like, the proper one is good. And, um, oh, is it A Little Night's Music? I don't know, it might have been. That's how uh, I always get confused for some reason between A Little Night's Music and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer Night's Dream is the Shakespeare. Shakespeare, yeah, I always get confused. I always, confused. I always say that. And they know that's Shakespeare. It's Stephen Sondheim's Little Nice Music. Oh. I don't know why I confused the two. They're like nothing alike, but <laughs> there we go. Yeah, but no, he's done. No, West Side Story's alright. The bit I've seen. So I think this, I think the lyrics written by some was it lyrics of some time and the music was think, something else. Or? I think it might be something like the other way around. Um, oh. I've not looked into it. I just saw it was on his Wikipedia. Mm. But Sweeney Todd, what a fucking show! Like Sweeney, I, I, I'm not usually big on my musicals. As we all, I need to his make m- you watch Phantom of the Opera. That's I know. That's important. I mean, Midget loved his Mamma Mia, and I, I had another phase when I was a kid. I'm not afraid to admit it's that. It's not a phase. <laughs> Mum, it's not a face, mum. But Sweeney, Sweeney Todd is like my all-time favourite. I love Sweeney. Like the film's got such a great cast. The original stage playing of Angela Lansbury and George Hurley. I got the DVD. Technically, just... that's not the original. Okay, the original had Len Cario, but the DVD recording when they toured it had George Hearn. So, oh. <sighs> and I really want them to do another performance of it. But the trouble is, they only just did one with Michael Ball and Imelda Staunton, and I missed it. And I'm worried I'm never going to get to see it. Does Imelda Staunton give one of the performances of her career? She does indeed. This is basically on, on my uh, my mum bought my my nan a um, DVD of, G- of a stage play of Gypsy, which Melda Staunton started. Started, and one of the reviews just said, "And Melda Staunton gives one of the performances of her career. <laughs> it's just one of them, not one of the best, or just just one of them, <laughs> a um, performance, which is an accurate statement of what that was happening in that very moment. Yeah, and that is a statement. And um, it's the best way. As Jacob to... once said, <laughs> when we completely debunked his entire religion. <laughs> <laughs> and now he doesn't believe in God. Apparently. Yeah, ooh, not sure his Christian parents will approve of that. No. That's a bit risky. But he is scared of Muslims, so. He is a little bit, um, which isn't, isn't ideal, but. <laughs> He'll, he, he, he won't listen this far, so it's absolutely He'll fine. He'll get bored. He'll just like, oh, Willem Defoe's penis. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. 
Oh, basically, Jacob is very uncomfortable with his sexuality. <laughs> Literally, basically, um... I'm not uncomfortable with my sexuality, I just don't want them waving theirs in my face. Good IT crowd reference. <laughs> uh, good, I could have said. A gay musical called Gay. That's, That's quite, quite gay! gay. <laughs> but yeah, basically, um... I, I, me, obviously, Ollie's dressed up as Widow Twanky to do a pantomime before. <laughs> We've cross-dressed many times on our channel. Um, so we, we don't really shy away from cross-dressing, like to us it's just, you know, whatever. Don't be a drag, be a queen. Exactly. <laughs> don't knock it till you tried that. You sound very much like Gemma Collins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being funny. <laughs> oh my god. I'm being funny, but I got off a jazzle and a magpie tried to steal my clitoris. Oh my god. I, I mean, whatever. I did just steal a little Frankie ball joke that I won't lie to you. But I love Frankie, so. Papa Frankie, credit to him. Papa Frankie went to my uni. I know, I saw it. He a, studied English Along in my uni. with Billy Idol. That's pretty cool. He, the only song I know he did was Dancing By Myself. Because it was in about three films I watched in a row. Yeah. And I got but really confused. I, 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 I live in a famously shit accommodation at my uni. Like, it's known as the slums. And I want, like, everyone who's even heard of my uni knows about how shit this accommodation is. Like, it has rats and shit. It's just falling out. Basically, it's a temporary accommodation built in the 70s for the builders that were building all the other residents and it just never got knocked down until now. So, I just want, like, I, if I ever meet Frankie Ball, Frankie, if you listen to this podcast right now, <laughs> East Slope, is it familiar? You know? <laughs> love, I'd love Slope. to hear about it, you know? That's at it, that's at him in this. Oh, yeah. Um, but anywho, uh, I've completely forgotten the point of where I was going with this. I think we were talking about the plot of Antichrist. No, 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 just, no, 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 not that far back, not that far back. I've, I've, Oh, fuck. Something about Frankie Boyle and Gemma Collins. Gemma Collins. Oh my god. What were you saying before Gemma Collins? What were you saying in a Gemma Collins voice? I don't remember. Oh, oh Jacob. Jacob, that's it. Jacob. Um, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> he's... <laughs> oh yeah, he's not Oh yeah, about fishnets, fishnets. Yeah. There we go. God, that was almost a train wreck. <laughs> So basically, Halloween 2016, I dressed up as old Greg, if anyone remembers Mighty Boosh, which you should, and if you haven't ever seen Mighty Boosh, do yourself a favour, get all three seasons, just set it in one night, it's, no, it's you will not regret, you will not regret. <laughs> <laughs> Any Channel 4 comedy, Jam, Brass Eye, Black Books, IT Mighty Crowd. Mighty Boosh was BBC. Fuck you, I forget these things, it just has a very Channel 4 comedy kind of feel to it, you know? Yeah, but you Garth Marenghi, that was Channel 4. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place was very good as well. So I just finished that. But yeah. anywho, point being, I dressed up as old Greg, uh, the famous crossdresser, and um, I've still got some fishnets and like my tutu knot from when I um, did that. And um, so one time when he came over, I dressed up in fishnets, and like, like he got very uncomfortable anytime I got near him. Like I'd like I like sit next to him, he'd like squirm, and, like run away from me, <laughs> and like I like I like, nudged him, and then he would like and he like freak out, or, like like he, it's like. It's like I was like these. The, my fish nets were kryptonite. He was su like a very repressed Christian Superman, <laughs> which is I an think awesome. We should write that story. <laughs> it's repressed an, Christian it's, Superman. It's an awesome name for a band or a song. <laughs> repressed Christians. Let's make let's make a mockumentary <laughs> about a band called Repressed Christian Superman. Yeah. Because we need to write another short film. With the music of Anal Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll write our own original. Mock music, <laughs> just making fun of mock music because he's mocking music. things. Get it? But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh puns. <laughs> we should make more films. We do need to make more films. So yeah, well we've got some ideas. Obviously we're we're working on a lot recently. That's why the channel's been quite well. Obviously I've been busy with uni. I've always been busy with college, but. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've been working actually working on some two book projects, and um, one of them we're going to keep under wraps for now, but we're working on one called The Day I Went Camping with Katie Hopkins, which is a short based story, story, based on a true story about when Midget was camping and he, uh, thought he met Katie Hopkins, and they pulled up with a dessert tent, oh, yeah. and all the dogs and all that, oh, it's just amazing. Yeah, I'm 90% sure. Yeah. Well, the question is, were they getting Katie with Katie? They were definitely getting Katie with Katie. Well, that's what we like. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, basically, we, we, we wrote a short children's story in the vein of something like Go the Fuck to Sleep, you know, a mock, or The Tiger Who Came for a Pint. <laughs> yeah, like a mock children's book. Have you ever seen that one? I think I might have done it. I think Sean Lock wrote and presented it on 8 out of 10, uh, 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very funny. Um, love Jimmy Carr and all that business. But anywho, and um, so we've written a children's story and we've, we've, we've shown it to, shown our first draft to a few test audiences. We're, we're looking for an illustrator at the moment. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if you if anyone who's an illustrator and like looking for a job, hit us up. E email midget on um, on Tumbleweed.films.1234 at gmail.com. All lowercase. All lowercase. Just spell that my guys. So if you're yeah, illustrator, hit us up. Uh, so we're hoping to actually get it published tonight, like, because like, a few people just said, you know, they'd be interested in it. Yeah, and um, I think it's got a wide enough audience. Because, you know, I think it's not a single person in this world, except Katie Hopkins, doesn't like Katie Hopkins. In fact, I'm willing to bet even Katie Hopkins isn't a big fan of herself. No, no and that's... The... There's a certain amount of self-hatred that must come from that, like... Yeah. There's no... You can't physically be that much of a living cunt <laughs> and not hate yourself just a little bit, you know? Yeah, I think it's... It's got a really great reach, and if we're lucky, she will read it, <laughs> she will hate it, and she will make angry Daily Mail articles about us. And more publicity for us, more people will buy it, exactly. and, and you know, all you want we'll be rich world. and famous, I can leave you <laughs> A midget can uh, pursue his film career. I and... can fund a film, Tommy Wiseau style, with money out of nowhere. My, my six million dollars to make a real Hollywood movie. Hollywood movie. You're telling me apart, Lisa! Anything for my princess! <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. What a story. Why are you betray me? Everyone betray me! The Room is just the best film ever made. No, it's because the Emoji Movie. I think our feelings for the Emoji Movie have been made clear. Well, the review didn't actually come out. The microphone was turned off. It was in the description. I've <laughs> since got a microphone that doesn't need to be turned on in the first place. Because it's I got a new battery. The one we use in the film. Oh, yeah. It's not battery Dead powered. Kid. Dead kitty, I've got. Yes, It's okay. not battery powered. It uses the camera battery. Okay. <laughs> so we've got some new tech. We've got some new ideas. Film wise, nothing really to work on as of yet. Like, no, we, we've, we've... I think I'd like to. Try and work on more short films on the channel, as so well as we our comedy. Live up to the name, yeah, and like Trigger Today as well, episode two. I've got some ideas knocking about. It's just I need to. I, I just, oh, yeah. at the moment I just don't have the time to write, write, sit down and write the script. There's a, a there's a lot to get triggered about at the moment. Don't get mm. me wrong. There's a lot. There's Fox a lot of material. <laughs> nah, I'm thinking. There's a lot. I've got like a whole list of notes on my phone. I've got. Mm. I I feel I've got enough to just sit down and write a script. It's just us <laughs> at the moment. I've got essays and assignments coming out of my ears, and the last thing I want to do is sit on the side of a laptop and fucking write things. You know, like mm. literally over my Easter holidays, this is like the only free evening I had. <laughs> you know, it's just it, my yeah. schedule is ridiculous at the moment. Um, but you know, mm. but no, yeah, yeah, we need to. Uh, we we've got stuff that we could get done, but I think I want to put more time and effort into better videos rather than no effort into sort of short rubbish. <coughs> One of the universe. Oh yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I mean, it's alright. It's got 50 views. That's better than some other things. Mm. It's better than Trigger Today. At some point I reckon what we should do in like 10 years time or something like that, we should just like, all the videos that we deleted, we should just find like all the old cringy ass ones that we deleted ages ago, that are no longer viewable on the channel, and just be like, have a reaction video. Yeah. In the in the in the so, spirit of Jinx and all of good old reaction channels. I don't hate a lot of those old videos as much as you do. They are awful. Yeah, they're not good, but I don't hate them as severely as you do. They're not something I want to be in the public domain. I wouldn't be comfortable with them. They're just too cringy. Because yeah, no one will find them though. No one knows about this channel. Uh... Other than the <laughs> sixty odd people that do know about the channel. Sixty two actually. Who is the sixty six? I think it might be my co-worker, because I subbed his channel to annoy him. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Will Edwards, um, who's a great... Your boy. He's a great guy. Oh, Scottish person I know. Um, subscribed. <laughs> anyway, we're rambling about things that are irrelevant to anyone else, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but... 
so yeah, we've got a lot of films and stuff. Got some we, ideas, we we've got some things knocking about. I've you got know. lots of script I've sort of started to write but never finished because I've just given up on the story because I can't find a reasonable way of conveying it. We just need to find the right idea. We just need to find the right idea. And um, mm -hmm. we'll keep you posted on the books and all that. We'll be sort of like a trailer and a place to buy it, hopefully, because we do want to publish it. Yeah. I feel we like get... we've really got something going with that. We need um, to find a publisher first, so we have to get it all printed out and formatted and whatever. That we, so, with illustration, so we can send it off and we can be like, yo, publish this Please. book. Please. Please. Yeah. Daddy. <laughs> I think you meant to get an agent first. You can't just hand it to a publisher and say, read this. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't got time for that. Oh, references from Dead Memes right there. Ain't nobody got time for that. I remember that. That was... Quality. Quality. Anyway, guys. Thanks for tuning with us. Thanks for wasting an hour of your life with your boys. With our longest video. Ever. It's pr quite an achievement, really. Yeah. We've talked shit, you know, we've laughed, we've cried. Oh, so what have we learned today, guys? Um, you know, don't rush your movie. Spend some time on it. We're going to write some cool books soon, so keep an eye out for that. Willem Dafoe's got a big old dick. He does. <laughs> really big old dick. I mean, it's scary. Like, children would cry at the sight of it. I think he a child bring... would cry at the sight of most genitals. They'd be like, oh, God, what was that? I don't know, some genitals, if they're, if they're well looked after, you know. It would still be a bit shocking for a child to witness. Well, yeah, was just, you just shouldn't whip your dick out in front of a kid, really. That's just... Tell Mr. Spacey yeah. that. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think it's more... I think he knew it wasn't okay. He just thought, ah! It does! <laughs> Come on! I'm gay, it's fine. <laughs> Allegedly. No, he, he is gay. He, I think I get the, the feeling... The I get the, I get the feeling he might have just said that to cover himself, you know? Just like, oh shit. Like, you know, I'm in a bit of hot water. Let's there, try and tack, tack myself onto the LGBT community, which there is fucked a, up. There was a funny bit in... in American Beauty where this guy kisses him and he goes, I'm not gay. And he said, wait 30 years, 20 years. <laughs> you won't be saying that. <laughs> you won't be too fussy about age and all. <laughs> oh, he's in it. Oh, no, in the film, he actually stops and he goes, maybe I'm not a such a good person. Maybe I shouldn't do this. He's probably privately, and then he dies. But, he probably um, privately thought that, so... Oi, spoilers for American Beauty fans. Oh, oh no, it oh. is literally the first thing said in the film. Oh, he's not in it for very long, then. No, he's in it for the whole film, but he's narrating, and at the beginning he says, in 25 hours or whatever is, I'll be dead. Spoilers? No, it is the first thing he says. Spoilers! <laughs> Han Solo dies at the end of The Force Awakens. Luke Skywalker dies at the end of The Last Jedi. Snape kills Dumbledore. Um... Bruce Willis the ghost at the end of Sixth Sense. Um, um, who, who else dies in things? Um, um, Ophelia dies in Pan's Labyrinth. Um, um, uh, <coughs> Gregory the Nige Sexual has a heart attack at the end of When Midget Met the Nige Sexual. He doesn't die. Oh, no. It's very triggered. Um, um, that's another film spoiler. Famous, famous and Indiana Jones died uh, a few Not years yet. ago. <laughs> Just, <laughs> did it? His franchise did. Oh yeah, definitely. So, so, that I was the have... first proper film I saw in a cinema, I and must... I don't hate it. I must admit though, I, I agree actually. I know everyone jokes about I don't actually hate Kingdom of Crystal Skull. To be honest, <laughs> I don't, I'll probably get a lot of triggered fans here. I actually don't think Temple of Doom was all that excellent. I haven't seen Temple of Doom in a while, but the blonde woman just is, she really annoys me. Oh, she can't act for shit. She's married as, to Steven as, Spielberg, as, and that's the only reason she's as Stewie, it. Yeah, as Stewie says in, uh, in um, Family Guy, they don't want to hear because she's humping director. Yeah. You know, it's just... The Raid of the Lost Ark, classic. Last Crusade, you know, Sean Connery and all that. Sean Connery, not a great person, but good Sean actor. Connery, classic. who once famously said, I think you should beat women. They just shove it. Which is... Oh, he's a great, he's a nice guy. But, um, he is. You're a great guy. Um, so yeah, like, like so it's a great, those are great films. But Temple of Doom, I just... There's a cool ideas in there, but like, oh my god. Have you ever seen The Young Sherlock Holmes? No. 
basically that was also a Spielberg thing which was released a year or so after Temple of Doom and that's got a big bit in a pyramid with these sort of culty people who are sort of taking people's hearts chanting and it, it's eerily similar and I can't help but think there might have been something probably shot on the same set someone stealing from someone it's a really good film you should see it it's one of those things I remember watching it as a child um came out in the 80s but things, are, things aren't as good recently. when you nostalgia watch them like I was always a big fa- I'm, I'm a I was always a big Scooby-Doo fan Scooby-Doo-Doo where are you? Is that the live action film? I, know, I loved all. This, I loved. I loved the original sixty Scooby Doo. I loved oh, yeah, the reboot so. TV series where it, uh, the um, what's new Scooby Doo? What's new Scooby Doo? I loved the live Coming action. I loved the live action movies, the live action reboot movies, all the animated movies that like shot independently went straight to DVD and VHS. Mm-hmm. But the one that was always part of my childhood was Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. Recently. Oh, I remember that. I've got it. That was so good. We nostal- I nostalgia watched it recently. My so flatmates, good. not. It's re- I'm sorry. I bet it is. No, no, it's bad. I'm sorry. When you take off the nostalgia goggles, oh my god, it's, it's really it's not. I think it's I'll bring it down from the flat with me. You and we like can watch the Phantom it. Menace, so. The Phantom Menace has many redeeming qualities. You thought Attack of the Clones was a good film. No, I, I don't. So like... you have no. No, no. I used to. No, I used to think it was all right. I no. I never said it was a good film. I said I thought I used to think it was better than Phantom Menace, but now I prefer Phantom Menace. Revenge of the I Sith never said Attack is of the, the only is a good, good prequel. I prefer- it's the only one that's watchable. I like Phantom Menace personally because it has more of a feel of the originals, and although it's slower burn, it has it, for me it feels more Star Warsy, it, and also it doesn't have Hayden Christensen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't get why people the bit on the Wii Casino planet in the Last Jedi, people really really hate that scene, and I get it's technically not important to the overall plot. But it feel it's the most Star Warsy feeling scene of that entire rebooted franchise. I don't like any of the rebooted just, franchise. It so. just feels like something out of one of the prequels, and it just sort of feels like it fits. I hate all of them. <laughs> Why? The Force Awakens is all right. Force Awakens is boring, just to rehash of what's already been done. Rogue yeah. One was just unnecessary and boring. And, and Last Jedi just uh, it just it was a bit of a mess, really. Rogue One was just you know. No, I really like yeah, Rogue I used... One. Rogue One was good. Force Awakens was... How many times I... have you seen Rogue One? About three or four times. I'm impressed you enjoyed it. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> better than The Force Awakens. I'll give you the Darth Vader bits awesome, but it's apart from just that... A, it's, it's really how, how many of the characters' names do you remember? They're all something. You've got Jin Erso. Yeah. You've got Bodhi Rook. You've got Diego Luna's character. Um, oh, yeah. Which begins with a C. Um... You got Galen Erso. That's it, Cassian. You've got um, Ben Mendo Mendelssohn's um, awesome Krennic. You have a very, very old sounding um, James L. Jones. Okay, I, I, I'm genuinely surprised I actually me- memorised that. Mo- okay, that's enough. Mo- Basically, the point I'm trying to make is most people can't remember the main people because they're just so. I, I wasn't a fan, okay? Most like, people don't I think... remember the name of the characters when they leave the cinema. Of the film they just watched. Point for me is that I think, I think Disney films visually they look good. They also get a higher production value, but mm. I just feel I just don't like the route they took with them. I I feel it just didn't take anywhere near. But anywho, um, the point is the got, point is Sco- female characters. The point is the point is Scooby Doo isn't as good as you remember. <laughs> uh, no, no, I just the film. I don't believe you. No, no Scooby Doo generally. I'm sure it is as good, but... I watched an episode of What's New Scooby-Doo the other day. Do you remember the one where they were at the theme park? With the green... Yeah, that was... I've rewatched that, that was brilliant. That's so good. No, I think the TV show's hard, but Zombie Island as a film didn't hold up, I just hate to say. Because I used to love it, because I think... Is that the one where it turns out they are actually Actually all... zombies, yeah. yeah. That's what I liked, because I think it's one of those few Scooby-Doo films where, like, you know... They were all just people in masks, like the zombies were real, and like it took. It was quite a dark mm. route that the story took for yeah. a kids' film, but the, the voice acting is terrible. Mark Hamill's actually in it. Ah. But um, did you it, ever see Ghoul School? Yeah, I saw. It Ma- was just with. I enjoyed Scooby and I, I like yeah, that one. I like that. It, was, it, was very, it felt so eighties. Um, mm. Yeah, I saw Scooby Doo: Cyber Chase, Alien Invaders, Zomp, and the one the vampires. Oh yeah. Um, you, there was that one at the music festival. 
The vampires. That was the vampire one. Yeah. <laughs> Shit for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, what else? There's been so many. The oh, live was, action one. There was the monster in Mexico. Do you remember that one? With oh, the Shu- uh, yeah. yeah. Did you ever watch Mystery Incorporated? Uh, I started. I, was, I think it was a bit past after my time, though. Yeah. No, I, I, I it's actually it. really good because it's all got an ongoing story mm. and there's sort of arc for the character. It's actually it surprising. We're such fucking children. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby Doo. <laughs> Debating the relative merit of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated compared to what's <laughs> new Scooby Doo. You can't beat the OG Scooby Doo, you know, um, the original Scooby-Doo Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Oh, yeah. No, the Scooby Doo show, the sequel one, was Scrappy Doo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with uh, the character that we don't speak of. <laughs> oh, shit, do you remember the one with the werewolf, one where Shaggy turns into a werewolf? And they have like, a race with Trans- There's like a car race with- in Transylvania with the Count Dracula. I remember one where Shaggy turns into Godzilla. <laughs> that was an and episode then, of What's New. Yeah, and then it turns out he wasn't actually. And people have just been giving him a hit now. <laughs> Like the episode of IT Crowd where, uh, Joanna Cosby. where uh, Matt Barry tries to seduce uh, Jen. Yeah, an accident. <laughs> but that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, but yeah, let's turn this on its head. Um, here's, so we're debating also the merit of classic films. Um, I think there's something that will turn the audience against you. Oliver, here, and, and I can see from looking facing is exactly what I'm about to go on about. <laughs> Oliver, I, I, I got Oliver oh, to watch Alien. Oh, Okay, I got Oliver. So me and Oliver watched Alien, and as any sane person does, he loved Alien. Okay. Alien is a really good film. Okay, we watched it together. Now, Just about to... a year later, he thought, you know what, I'm actually going to catch up and watch the other three. Um, and then, of course, he did, he's actually, he's also seen Prometheus and Alien Covenant as well, the prequel ones. But, so he, he bought the box and he's, he watched Aliens, and he did, I'm going to add, he watched the director's cut of Aliens, he saw the good one. Okay, well, everything was as it was meant to be, as James Cameron intended. He watched also watched Alien Three uh, and Alien Resurrection. He loves Alien Three. <laughs> he thinks it's one of the best films he's ever seen. He absolutely not one of the best films I've ever seen. He loves it. He it's even good. loves Alien Resurrection. I don't love Alien Resurrection. He even loves. I like Alien Resurrection. One that's famously considered shit. He he hates aliens. <laughs> I... I really do. He I fucking can't. hates the guts of it. He prefers Alien Covenant and Alien Resurrection to Aliens. aliens films that are famously meh. <laughs> aliens is just a they cardboard cut out eighties action hero characters. You've got the sassy Mexican one. You've got the guy that turns that starts off as a bit of a penis. But it grows to be nice near the end. If the guy who sacrificed himself the greater cause. And he's just, just, no! The dialogue is terrible. The direction is boring. The story is, it's not fun. It loses anything that the original had. And it's just, it is just an action. It feels like it was an 80s action film that someone's from, can we make this an alien sequel? So they put an S on the end of the original title, which is as lazy as the film itself is. And then they just chucked in an alien near the end. And little, that'll do. Now, alien 3 is good. It's more like the original. The direction is really interesting. The story itself took an interesting turn. And then Alien 4, is just, it doesn't take itself seriously like aliens should have done. Aliens just, it, it needs to know that it is a cheesy action film, but it doesn't. It's just, and it doesn't. How is Alien Covenant better than Aliens? It's just, it's it just it, that was good. Boring. Um, I've just seen it all before, mess. I think the problem for me was that um, Prometheus, like, although, like, obviously a lot of people weren't a fan, I enjoyed Prometheus from the point of view, it brought some interesting philosophical ideas in, and, like, I think people were expecting it just to be another Alien film, and like for me, I like the fact that it wasn't just another Alien film, because Alien's been done four times. Mm. You know, I feel like it was interesting, it was adding to the universe, adding the idea of the engineers, and the philosophical side of it, and all that kind of interesting kind of sci-fi kind of mythology and all that. And it's kind of introducing Aliens without kind of like just making it all about them, and I I found that those ideas really interesting. And I feel like Prometheus, like, it was a bit overlong, granted, and like, they could have done a bit more. 
But like, talk about over long. Have you seen Aliens? It's two and a half hours long. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I think like Prometheus sets up a lot of interesting plot directions, but then of course because Alien because uh, that got a, Prometheus got a lot of backlash. With Alien Covenant and Ridley Scott's like, fine, I'll just make another rehash Alien film and make it nice and gory. That's what you modern audiences want. And of course, by that point, people think, well, we want a philosophical film, not just another rehash Alien film. So when they got another rehash Alien film, that did really badly. So like, I think the problem is it just, like, people weren't getting what they were expecting. Because I think people were expecting Prometheus to be too alien -y and Alien Covenant to be too prometheus -y. <laughs> So, like, both just flopped. And I feel like, for me, like, Prometheus set up a load of interesting routes, so th and like, those should have been explored in Alien Covenant, but instead they just like killed off the engineers really early, cut off all the major plot routes, and just made it look, oh, aliens. And for me, it's just all like, oh, I've seen this before, you know? It just, it just didn't do anything new. It, but it, uh, it was, it didn't need, it wasn't meant to be a big philosophical thing. Their, their action, not action, they're sort of sci-fi well, horror it, films you're not it's, meant, it's, it's meant to follow think. up from prometheus though i wanted more prometheus what did you think of prometheus i thought it was all right what did, did you prefer the incompetence prometheus yeah oh my gosh yeah i <laughs> talk about not remembering any characters i don't remember a single person from prometheus i vaguely remember charlize theron was in it and idris and elba was in it and is Michael Fassbender in it? Yeah. I know he's in the second. Yeah. In oh yeah, and James Franco was in Alien Covenant for like two seconds. I'm like, I don't know why they used he's a in big the, actress he's in the minor role. Prequel short film. The um, yeah, but like who cares about that? <laughs> I think that what made Alien Covenant was the bit where Michael Fassbender, other than him kissing himself, is when he's playing the flute with himself and he's a you blow, I'll do the fingering, and that's just the greatest line in any film ever. Um, I don't know. I think I think uh, Beefy Bert's I don't know from Horrid Henry the movie <laughs> is really quite special. See, I prefer Horrid Henry to Aliens. Did you hear that? That was the sound of like a million keyboards <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> I I hate Horrid Henry. It is an awful mess of a film. Don't you remember the heavy metal cover? In... Of, he, heavy metal cover rather of Frere Jacker. Come on. That was brilliant, exactly. It's and Noel, funny. And Noel Fielding just looked like looking like he'd rather be anywhere else. He was clearly meant to turn up in that end scene, but he just went, no. Bas so he's not oh yeah, basically we watched Harry and Harry in the movie just to see how bad it is. It's, it's, it's quite bad. <laughs> I don't recommend that as an experience. <laughs> I recommend it a thousand times. I think it just tried to be every single type of film in one go. Yeah, because it had those sort of brightly coloured, centralised Wes Anderson type shots. It had all the weird Dutch angle, dark. It had all the Dick and Dom in the bungalow oh, shots. Yeah. Was Dick, Dick and Dom, Dom terrifying. In Dick that and film. Dom desperately trying to stay relevant. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... The only way they could make the news these days is if one of them went into rehab. And even then they'd just be copying Ant and Dyke still. <laughs> See, and I... Sam and Mark will pop up and be like, do you remember us? No. <laughs> <laughs> says it no one remembers sam and mark <laughs> um no matter who you are um but yeah there's that they're show on a saturday morning for like a month <laughs> they had they had sam and mark's big friday wind up that was basically just ant and dex saturday night takeaway but the day before <laughs> and with children and it was, was it Friday down there was because was I had one of the actors from the dumping ground slash Tracy Beaker's turn presenting it. Oh yeah. I vaguely remember that being quite interesting. Nah, it wasn't for me. That was a bit after my time though, because yeah. maybe it's a bit younger than me, you see. Yeah. A couple of years. Mm. So, yeah, no, I remember it being alright. Mm. <laughs> well this this has been quite an adventure. We've gone from um from, this is a 10 minute film. We've gone from Willem Dafoe's cock <laughs> to CBBC. <laughs> um, I think it was a pretty natural transition, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. I feel like Willem Dafoe's dick could just bridge the gap, you know? Oh, that yeah. big old gap. It's big enough, honestly. <laughs> That's a half an hour gap. Just Google it, just Google it. <sighs> Go incognito, just Google it, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so. Thank you very much for enjoying us. Uh, this is the second time we tried to close down this podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on this sprawling journey of madness. Yeah. Um, we hope you enjoyed it and had as much fun as we have just talking shit for a, an hour no. and a quarter. Fucking hell. This is the longest we've managed to make a podcast. And like, 
and it almost not rambled, you know? <laughs> so yeah, we'll be, we'll be back to talk shit with you guys very soon, you know, when we've got a new short film or something to talk about. Yeah. So yeah. Bye for now, guys. See you, Kyle.